Hi everyone, I'm your host Matt Salem and you've tuned in to another episode of Our Best Behavior, brought to you by Behaviorly. We are the global digital first leader in defining and diagnosing human behavior to help you achieve the most valuable moment in marketing when a purchase transaction occurs. We are Behaviorly, the transaction experts. Each episode we share insights on trending topics within our industry and of interest to our customers. Today, we're joined by two of my behaviorally colleagues, Sarah Martone, Director, Behavioral Qualitative, and Jake Ryan, Insights Associate. In this episode, we will continue our discussions around AI and how it's revolutionizing our industry, really leading to a lot in terms of benefits, ethical considerations, and potential advancements. Sarah, Jake, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. So... Want to know what's going on, Sarah, a little more with you. I know you're in the midst of wedding planning. Can I get the (laughs) the quick scoop on that? Yeah, sure. Um, Wedding planning is going great. Uh, Getting married in upstate New York. My partner and I have been together for 15 years, so it's a long time coming. Um, And we're looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on that. Jake, I mean, that's a lot to compete with. (laughs) I got nothing for that. Yeah, I can't top that. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, hopefully things are going well and there's some interesting stuff going on, even if it's not getting married. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, just living day to day, enjoying my time here and uh, getting outside when I can, even though the weather hasn't been ideal, but it's been good. Good, good. Glad. Well, you know, this season we've been talking a lot about AI and how it's, you know, kind of coming into our industry and frankly the world at an alarming pace. I don't know, alarming, crazy. I mean, you hear about, I saw some posts just today about hey, AI is usually associated with like killer robots. I think that was one of our colleagues commenting on a post. (laughs) And I'm curious how to see that this will pan out in the future. And, you know, there's just been such an influence. But I guess keeping it in the industry, right, not in the the world as a whole for a moment. How are you guys seeing AI come into day to day for you, maybe with the qualitative spin, too, on it? Yeah, so from my experience now and as it stands, we've mostly been using it in, or slowly rolling it out in our day-to-day operations for, uh, I think we started with transcription services is probably the the main place to focus on um, in regards to that, just because it's been such a huge factor in how how we're able to turn around um, these large amounts of, you know, recordings and get them down into a more condensed, simplified, uh, easy-to-digest format. So that's probably been, like, the main... Uh, the main platform we started with. Okay, okay. Uh, and I know you're using it to help kind of organize ideas, I would say, right, yeah. that come out of the qual sessions mm-hmm. with the shoppers themselves that we're talking to. Um, if you think about the different ways that platforms can work, have you seen one platform? Not that we have to name platforms per se, but have you seen differences in platforms and how the data is presented to you after it's putting? So I know you guys have been experimenting with a few different tools. Yeah. You want to talk about um, the one you introduced me to? Yeah, sure. Um, I've been doing a lot with Otter AI. Um, they're a fantastic transcription service that we've been using, and you just upload the videos. We've been doing it from uh, all aspects of whether it be qualitative research that we've done in Uh, had in the lab or online, Um, even if we need meeting notes from something internal that we have. um, You can upload directly to the site. You can even record in the moment. So if you don't record on the meeting channel, but you're recording on their site, um, it's really cool because it actually picks up on people's voices too. So my personal voice is logged in their system. Um, and even if I've done previous work, it'll recognize me, it'll hear me, and it'll automatically assign me to the next project and know that I'm the person speaking. Very cool. um, so it's really awesome to be able to carry these tools through. Um, you can search through the functions and really find specific quotes. So that's how it's really been helping day to day for us. Um, it's cutting down a lot of that busy work. Mm. Yeah, and I, and I think that's where a lot of people see AI truly coming into play in their mm-hmm. day-to-day, right? It's handling a lot of the tasks that we have that maybe are a bit more redundant or don't require as much heavy analytical thinking, let's say, right? And then it helps to promote more analytical thinking because mm-hmm. it's taking all of that data, whether it's numbers or verbiage, and really creating some themes for us to think about more. Yeah, um, and any any other solutions that you guys yeah. have been entertaining? I know I've seen you at your desk playing yeah. around with a bunch of different things yeah, as I've I been, walk by over the years. I've been so. trying um, these new extensions that got introduced to ChatGPT, and um, they've uh, allowed it to pair with other websites. So in particular, I've been using Canva 
Um, there's a Canva extension now. So I'll, t I'll give it a prompt um, based on my output needs uh, for the research or the project uh, in question. And it'll, it'll build me a full uh, deck um, based on the research we conducted just by a simple overview of the objectives. Um, so that's been helpful. It definitely sped things up on, on my end. And the same thing works for video. I make a lot of the, uh, the sizzle reels um, for research deliverables, and it's done the same for that as well. It, it finds the time codes, finds the quotes. I'm able to go in and clip it out, and it makes the whole process a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, even um, the site that we use to conduct research on, a lot of the times for our digital diaries, Recollective, um, they integrate uh, – AI tools into their software. So they use things, they use a similar transcription service as well, um, but they even have the ability, uh, now I think they mentioned this morning to us, yeah. that they can, uh, it's basically for a digital diary because it's an open-ended uh, response. Um, they have it so that they blocked off copy and paste options, so participants can't just chat GPT their way through uh, a qualitative uh, prompt. Okay. They actually have to get involved and invested in it. So sure. it's a really cool and intriguing way to get insights and collect the data um, while also knowing and reassuring that we don't have to worry about where the data is coming from. And is it good information? It's truly the, res uh, the response of the participants. Sure, sure. Well, I think that actually segues into an interesting piece of subject matter tied to qualitative research holistically mm -hmm. and how AI might influence the respondents in our research, right? So if you think about different ways, at least that I've heard in the industry, AI being used. Some of it is for idea generation where our clients are even thinking of AI as this kind of pseudo respondent that they can talk to. Now they're using that with judgment and they're using it, I think, with caution. Mm -hmm. But with that said, if you think about when we talk to actual folks, there's probably certain securities that you wanna make sure are in mm -hmm. place such as that, particularly if it's bulletin board type responses where you're not sitting there and you evaluate it afterwards, I would imagine. So is this something that you guys are actively thinking about day to day as you conduct qualitative research? Or is it something that when we think about platforms that we can leverage is a, is a key piece that we're looking for partners to tell us they have in terms of the securities in place for qualitative? Yeah. So, I mean, the end goal is to get the best uh, results for our clients, right? And if that means leveraging artificial intelligence to generate um, uh, thoughts that a consumer might have, the, that's a, a great opportunity. There is some caution um, with that. I mean, a lot of these generative AIs, especially when you're asking it to generate uh, verbiage, it's not always original thoughts, right? It's pulling from a lot of different sources on the web. So. When you're talking to a respondent, whether that's online or in person, you are getting those like off the cuff um, original ideas a lot of the times. And that's something that really can't be replaced, at least not from what I've seen yet. Mm -hmm. And it's, def it's definitely interesting to keep in mind you know, what the capabilities will look like down the road. But right now, I think it's, uh, it's best to just, um, it's a tool used for en enhancing our delivery, uh, deliverables and uh, just making things easier on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree with that. For me, uh, AI really replaces a lot of our day-to-day -day, uh, operations, but at the end of the day, it can never replace a person. That's mm -hmm. why qualitative exists. So the benefit to uh, all this AI is, yes, it's less busy work on our desk, um, but it really gives us the opportunity to decompress, dive into the minds of the consumers and understand what they're really going through because AI can't detect those really specific nuances that we do uh, as humans. So there's sentiment analysis that we really take pride in. There's understanding body language and really gauging what's what's on people's face, how their body's responding to things. Um, because if a consumer, for example, is looking at my shelf and they have their arms crossed, they have this kind of scowl on their face, and they're like, yeah, it's fine, right? <laughs> AI might pick that up and say, okay, well, that's a, that's a positive thing because right. they said it's fine. Right. Um, but in human behavior, we know some of these specific cues, um, and it allows us to probe a little bit deeper and understand. So understanding these little these human aspects of things really shows that AI is there to help assist, but there's nothing that's really going to replace um, good qualitative insights that way. 
Yeah, I, I love that. I love the example that you provided about somebody saying it's fine. I mean, at face value, that could be an okay thing. But mm -hmm. when they're making the scowl mm -hmm. or they're folding their arms or they're huffing and puffing a bit, that tells you a different definition of it being fine, right? Exactly. Um, it's understanding what the sentiments truly, really mean. And from everything that I've seen so far in AI analysis, it's just not there yet to truly read that human mind and decompress or... Uh, disassemble what's going on for people mm, so mm. so in thinking about how you're using ai more so which sounds like you know going through all the responses at scale enabling you to build your pov faster by creating themes for you etc and obviously you can check that in your mind's eye so to speak because you were at the research too like jake i know you're in the back room too so when you're looking at these transcripts you can say well i don't know if the ai has that quite right and really dig in if you need to but with that do you see a future where rather than ai being incorporated primarily on the back end so to speak that it's actually living in the research for example i know we've had certain tools in place where we can quite simply still ai but maybe word cloud responses mm -hmm. together on the fly right that's kind of ai in the mix right i mean it is i guess technically right it's something that sums it up for us but it's probably not ai as we begin to think about it today with generative ai and right. such do you see opportunity for tools or do you see tools being in the research itself uh, whether that's happening now or in the future yeah um just something that comes to mind immediately um I know we try to keep um, you know the stimulus uh, as set in stone going into research, but with all these new capabilities that you know Dolly has and even Canva has an image mm -hmm. generator now, if you were able to say at the end of the research session, you know, whether it's a focus group or an IDI, you you collect um, optimizations from the respondents, and if you were able to type in those optimizations in real time by feeding it the initial uh, stem design, it might be able to generate some form of uh, the packaging that resonates with the consumers and that could be included in the end deliverable as well. So mm. something to keep a look out for. That was almost exactly what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Um, when we do workshopping a lot of the times too, um, there'll be this illustrative portion of it where it's a lot of mind mapping between uh, us, clients, uh, even their stakeholders or potential uh, investors, people who are buying in. And it's so... Um, it's not as tangible as the typical pack research that we do. Mm -hmm. So when we do these types of uh, workshops, I feel like there's an opportunity for us to leverage things like Dolly and all these illustrative uh, AI tools to help create some of these opportunities and feed them in through it and see what it comes out with. I think that'd be a really cool option to be able to do very quickly. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I, I certainly couldn't agree with both of you more. I see in the future great opportunity for us to even leverage results that we have, perhaps even on the quantitative side and start mm -hmm. to think about on the fly iteration, what does it look like when you optimize your design system and have AI help facilitate that visually? Doesn't mean that's the answer and then you just take that and run with it, of <laughs> course, not, right? Yeah. Like anything else, there has to be human intervention. Um, but I, I couldn't agree with you guys more. I think there's great opportunity in the design realm. And I'm wondering, have you heard from any designers that you've partnered with viewpoints? Because I know for me, I'd say about a year and a half ago-ish, give or take, one of the concerns was designers were worried about AI creating designs that were, yes, quick, and maybe there were many iterations, but that really just didn't appropriately leverage all of the design community mm -hmm. knowledge, let's say. Yeah. and how the tide has turned because now so many months, 18 months, call it later, I feel I've been hearing designers leveraging the tool because it gives them ideas that they can then further morph and tweak on their own, right? So at first it felt like designers may be hesitant to leverage AI for image generation because they feel like, oh wow, now our computer's gonna tell us what to do essentially, right? <laughs> Whereas it's become, hey, it's really a great jumping point for us and it can help us think of more options more quickly that we can then bring the expertise to to fine tune. So I don't know, just being on the qualitative side and tending to be earlier, further upstream and talking to design folks maybe in a more iterative way, have you heard anything along those lines, whether it was in the camp of concern or in the camp of, hey, we're using it a lot from the design community? 
Yeah, I think it's about finding that balance. And from what I've heard um, is that it, it does provide a good starting point um, to get feedback from your internal stakeholders um, prior to launch and before validation even. So providing a starting point that can be tweaked in whatever direction it needs to be, um, that's been helpful, it seems like, uh, for them. And then also the, the pace it, it, which is able to generate new ideas um, based on you know, the, the input provided. Um, I just think it's, it's good for the process as a whole. Again, it does need to be signed off on and you know, um, optimized, if you will, um, by the, the people that design the packages. And it's just about getting to um, what resonates with the consumer at the point of purchase, at shelf, what's emotionally connecting with them. So getting to that final stage is still going to require some uh, input, and uh, the majority of that being from the consumers themselves. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good starting point, I'd say. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, I guess I will close out with a personal question for Sarah about AI, which is, have you used it for any wedding planning? <laughs> I actually have, ironically. All right. Um, yeah. Here we go. So, uh, Jake introduced me to Canva, um, through all the work that we've been doing with our great sizzle reels. Uh, and what I've been doing lately is I've been making a lot of um, wedding signage. Okay. Um, but I had this picture of my cats that I wanted to put on my wedding signage because our signature beverages are named after them. Okay. Um, but this certain picture that I have, unfortunately, the top of my cat's ears are cut off. And so I needed a way to replace them and finish out the rest of the drawing. So I uploaded the picture of them. It's so silly. I uploaded the picture of them to an AI auto generator, and you would have no idea that it auto generated the rest of my cat's head. Oh my um, gosh, I so, love it. So, yeah, anytime people see it at the wedding, they're <laughs> going to have no idea. But yeah, I've used AI generation for wedding planning. Um, I, I use it for almost everything, honestly, day to day. Awesome. Uh, it's super helpful, and it's definitely just made things a lot easier. So. Love it. Cool. I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I really thank both of you for coming on today. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you both. I appreciate you taking the time out of the busy schedules to join. I thank our audience for tuning into Our Best Behavior, brought to you by Behaviorally. Sarah, Jake, hopefully we'll see you here again. And for everyone else listening, be sure to check out other episodes of the Our Best Behavior podcast on your local internet. Mm -hmm. We'll catch <laughs> you next so time. Much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.